Hello everyone. This demonstration will focus on Itential's new product, Lifecycle Manager application, being introduced as part of Itential's automation platform 2023.1 software release. Throughout the demo, you'll learn about Lifecycle Manager features that the NetDevOps teams can leverage to keep state of automation and its results that contain critical information about networks and third-party systems being configured and updated. Uh, Lifecycle Manager is our brand new product. Uh, as part of the automation, automation, attentional automation platform suite. And what this aims to do is to now enable customers to take advantage of uh, the state that attentional keeps on the attributes of a service. And I'll quickly dive into that. Like this is a homepage. As you can see, I've already have a lot of action history that I've run against uh, cloud infrastructure, DC, as well as security rules. But on the left-hand side, are the list of resources that we have identified, right? What is a resource? So when I select the cloud infrastructure, to me, a resource is something that I want to perform lifecycle around. And in this specific case, uh, because it's uh, cloud infrastructure, which means I'm instantiating a VPC, I'm provisioning subnets, I'm provisioning uh, outbound internet gateway configuration, as well as security groups, for a tenant. In this case, a tenant is an application that a software developer wants or a organization wants. But guess what? Once that tenant goes away, I'm also responsible for deleting all those assets that were created. So what this resource model enables you to do is identify what you care about most. So when I go provision something on behalf of a customer, I care about the VPC ID. Right, because I'm creating a VPC. I care about the subnet ID, etc. So these are the five things that I care about when I create um, a cloud infrastructure for a tenant. And once I've defined a resource model, the next thing you have the ability to do is define actions against it. So what are actions, right? Usually when you have a resource that you're performing lifecycle around, you might want to create it, you might want to update it, and you might want to delete it, right? So there are several um, there, there are times where you could have one create action or you could have multiple create action. Specifically in this case, what we have done is we have created uh, an action here that actually goes and creates the infrastructure. And when we are talking about action, let's double click on that. Within the LCM application, an action represents a combination of data manipulation that could be done leveraging uh, our JST capability, the data integration strategy, uh, where we're consuming data from different resources and piping that into a workflow in the background that is responsible for creating that infrastructure against AWS, right? So it comes back to the workflow taking advantage of our integrations into different sources, whether it's Azure, AWS, et cetera. And when this action is revoked, I mean, uh, invoked via an API or the UI, it will perform the data manipulation, it will run that automation in the background, and once AWS sends the information back saying, hey, I've created this VPC, this is the ID, this is a subnet, this is the ID for the subnet, we capture all that information and pipe that into a transformation, which now updates our resource model. So if I were to click on this particular uh, JST, you will notice this is an output of an existing automation that performs uh, all the infrastructure creation, but what I get back from AWS is these uh, pieces of information. What I'm doing now is associating the VPC ID, the security group ID, the route table, et cetera, with our resource model. So if I created this on behalf of Acme Group as a tenant, now when I go look at the instance, in this case, a lifecycle instance for Acme Group, I will now be able to make sure that the VPC ID associated with that new tenant is the right ID, right? What this also helps us with is when the tenant moves away, we can use this piece of information to go undo all the actions we did against the network. So think about, you know, uh, when we're um, trying to provide a service to the end customer that requires us to not only manipulate and create cloud infrastructure, we're also modifying ports in your data center in a hybrid fashion. We we'll also have to go and manipulate security group, um, uh, security rules on Panorama, for example, right? To make sure that once the tenant is onboarded, their application can actually talk to assets on-prem. But when the tenant goes away, we wanna be able to decommission all the resources so they're rightfully available for the next tenant, right? So, Going back to the previous screen, 
uh, where you saw an example of a resource that was created for cloud infrastructure. Uh, I've done the same for a data center port where I care about the interface name that is being pulled from Netbox in this case and the IP, next available IP address that's being pulled dynamically from Infoblox. Why is this important for me to keep is because when the customer goes away, Itential can now as part of this lifecycle go and delete the interface that was created for that customer, but also uh, release the IP address within Infoblox. Right, which is very important. So now it's available for the next set of tenants that might come and want that service. And finally, uh, we have done the same thing for a security rule here against Panorama. So the purpose of this was to make sure that customers have the ability to create resource models against different domains, cloud, data center, and from a security. And finally, there's, a, there's one over here on the left which I'm calling the application hosting service. This actually represents a combination of us creating cloud infrastructure, data center asset, like creating an interface port uh, within the data center, and finally manipulating uh, or adding a new security rule for end-to-end -end connectivity. So what, what we're gonna do next is now that I've created a model, I've also associated the actions here to actually provision this service for the end user. Let's go ahead and create one, right? So what I'm gonna do is go to the instances, create, and as you can see, right, because of uh, the investments that we have made in understanding schemas and associated JSON schemas with workflows um, and all the other assets within Itential, it automatically generates this. And this is a required set of inputs to kick off this particular hosting service. Uh, I've toggled this to JSON view, but at the same time, if I go here, it dynamically renders a set of uh, fields that someone can kind of fill out here, right? Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna go back to the JSON view. Um, let's go ahead and post this payload here. All right, so that is representative of what a customer would look like, and we're gonna call this Acme Group. And as soon as I save it, what it has done, it has instantiated uh, the first action, which is to create a set of resources to represent the service for this specific customer. So when I click on it, you'll notice currently the action is running. And what is the action, right? The action is a combination of data manipulation and this automation in the background. So I have the ability to go take a look at it. But more importantly, once this action is successfully completed, and it's still running right now. So it has successfully completed the workflow that actually creates cloud infrastructure, uh, a port and data center and modifies a security rule. So if I refresh it one more time, it should say completed. Now we have a successful action that has been completed for Acme Group. So we have successfully created cloud infrastructure. So I, if I go back, actually uh, go into uh, our VPC. So let's go take a look and refresh this page. You'll notice we have created this Itential SE, and this was successfully created as part of the lifecycle automation that we have kicked off. Not only that, if we go back to Palo Alto, um, and I can quickly log in here. All right, and while that is coming up, uh, one thing I do want to showcase is we also made a change on a CLI driven asset as part of that lifecycle of the service. So what I can do is real time go into configuration manager and because that device has been onboarded and we're federating that, if I go into this uh, CSR device and load live configuration and we're pulling this live against the device, we'll notice that we have successfully created a um, we have successfully created an interface here, Lubac 103, and this was the IP that we obtained from Infoblox. So, you know, as we created all these resources, that's great, but what John mentioned is, instead of just doing fire and forget, if I go back to Lifecycle Manager, and particularly uh, go back to the hosting service, I can go take a look at existing instances. So for Acme Group, when I go to the properties, these are all the attributes that we are keeping state on. So now imagine representing uh, Acme Group as a customer for this application hosting service, where they now not only have their infrastructure, they have an interface, 
that allows them to access the data center resources and a security rule associated with this customer. All of that is represented on the right hand side. So now the customers have the ability to build additional actions like deleting this specific customer as part of the application hosting service, or I can also update it. So let's say I wanted to come in and say, hey, I don't, I have, I'm, I'm switching my data center from East Coast to West Coast. That potentially has an impact on the DC port parameters, right? So uh, what I'm gonna mention is now that we're also keeping state of these attributes, if I go back to actions, I have the ability to now decommission this particular customer. So let's say they stop paying for this service. When I actually invoke this option, and I'm doing that here from the UI, but very easily all, uh, all of the actions that I'm doing here also have an API associated with it. So this could be uh, invoked externally to make sure that, hey, if there's a service portal and the customer is gone, now they can invoke this particular action against Itential and we can take care of it from a lifecycle perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Um, as you can see, it's currently in progress. So if we go to the history, and I click on it right now, it's going through the motion of running that automation in the background that is going to be decommissioning. In this case, deleting all the resources that we created against AWS, which is a VPC panorama, the security rule, as well as deleting the uh, interface from within the actual device. So let's go ahead and refresh it one more time here. <clears throat> and once we see completed, I can quickly jump back to uh, the AWS portal just to show that we have deleted all the resources. So there you go, we're complete. So now if I go back here, go to the VPCs, you'll notice the VPC is gone. If I go back to the configuration manager and I refresh this, we should not see the loopback 103 interface and the same with the panorama security group rule. So if I go back here, you'll notice the 103 is not. So the point of this application as John and as part of this demonstration is, to enable our customers to not only define resources at a modular level, but kind of tie those together to provide an overall life cycle around a service that you're offering. In this case, the example was a service that traverses multiple domains, but also multiple technologies that now you can keep a trace of and then perform actions against. That was the end of our demonstration. Thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day.